All right, so welcome to another rapid fire business story of the week. This is part of our rapid fire series. And today we have an incredible guest with us, someone who's achieved extraordinary success and is here to share their unique business journey with you. We're excited to hear their insights. So let's welcome them to the show. All right. So as this is our rapid fire series, we've got one minute or less to answer each question. So in a minute or less, give us the elevator pitch to your story and your life. Go. Oh my goodness. The elevator pitch to my story and my life. Uh, there's so many things to say as, as, as one might expect. I'm known as the father of the virtual assistant, the AI virtual assistant. I'm probably best known for that. Although I have 95 patents uh, in, in a variety of fields. But, uh, but I invented everything that became Siri and Alexa uh, and uh, the AI virtual assistants that we, that we have today. That was a great experience building a team at General Magic and spending a few hundred million dollars, I think, to build that product out the first time. Um, but we did that. We did it successfully. I went on to uh, also uh, invent things like soundproof drywall and multivariate reverse auctions for the web and and AI for software QA and other building materials, all kinds of things. Um, so I've been uh, fortunate to have a very storied and and broad career that even spans to Broadway and musicals and film. So that's fascinating. And I would love to dig a little bit deeper. So tell us a bit more about what you're working on today that you're most passionate about and believe will have the biggest impact. Today I'm working uh, uh, on a number of things, but one of them is a company called AppVance and AppVance is an AI company. And as an AI company, we are focused on AI for software QA. Probably not well known, but there's $120 billion of spend around the world, mostly in quality assurance for enterprise software, enterprise software that runs the enterprise. Uh, most enterprises have five to 15,000 applications that they manage. And, um, and this is, they have to QA them. They have to make sure that every time they change something that the quality stays, stays there. There's about two and a half to three million people employed, uh, doing that manual testing and sometimes doing test automation. So we've got AI that does a great job, uh, at essentially replacing what the humans do in that field. Uh, and, 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 you know, I know that's scary to some people, but it's a, it's an exciting time because it means that we'll be able to find those bugs in under an hour instead of what can be weeks and, uh, and do so at 99% lower cost and, uh, and lower headcount. So it's a very exciting time to apply AI in a variety of fields. That's one that I'm particularly passionate about at this time. So this next question is one that every entrepreneur has dealt with. Tell us about a time where you failed. We often say failure is the first step to success. So think about a time where you failed in the past. What happened? What did you learn from it? Well, uh, when we talk about failures, this is a, a, a common question. I, you know, the way I look at it is I fail all the time. <laughs> Every day we fail in some portion of a of a project like in AI. I mean, it, it's fraught with failures and occasional successes because it's such a new area. And when you're pushing the envelope, that is is, is one of the things that happened. I remember um, in the invention of uh, some of the technology around soundproof drywall, we continue to over and over and over again fail to develop a product that could score and snap in, uh, uh, in the field uh, easily uh, because that required some really new chemistry. And uh, we failed at that for several years. Um, eventually we did succeed. So, so I, I would say this, if you, if you are, if you have the money and you're willing to try long enough, you may find that you don't fail. And, and you know, one of the things I say about startups all the time is the only thing that kills a startup is they run out of money. Because if they still had money, they'd be still going forward, right? The only thing that shuts down a startup is they run out of money. It's very simple. So don't run out of money and, uh, and, and have enough runway so that you can keep trying. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. And we're definitely going to have to have you back on the show to dive deeper into each of these questions. But for now, one thing that I often say is, and I tell this to my employees and the people who work with me and for me all the time, is that when a tree falls in the forest, if nobody hears it, 
Did that tree actually fall? This brings me to this next question. How do you make sure that all of these amazing projects that you're involved in get noticed? What marketing and advertising methods have worked best for you? You've got a minute. Let's go. Well, to get noticed, of course, depends on... Well, we'll start again. To get noticed, it depends on what you're doing, right? And and in some cases, like uh, my keynote speaking, I've got 30 or 40 keynotes a year. Um, it's things like podcasts. And it's things like uh, um, uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, daily posts and, and sometimes twice daily posts, right? But when you when you look at B2B businesses like AppVance, which is AI for software QA for the enterprise, that is a very different kind of thing. And that's a, a technology where we've got to get in front of CIOs and VPs. And, um, and that is a very targeted marketing effort. Obviously, Google and search, SEM, SEO, um, as well as targeted outreach, as well as SDRs, as well as leveraging AI to, to find the right prospects for you. You've got to get in front of senior level people who have the right size budgets to, uh, to care about this problem. That was so awesome. We're definitely going to dive deeper into this on a later show. And as we approach our last question, before we ask people how people can get a hold of you, how people can reach you, learn more about the work that you're doing in your company, and we will include all that information in the show notes. What I wanted to ask you is what is one piece of advice that you would offer to your younger self? to our audience and to somebody, especially somebody who's just starting out in the same niche that you're in, but just doesn't know how to start or get going. Amazing stuff. We're going to have to thank our guests. There's so much adv advice I would have for my younger self, uh, in, in, including uh, job one, which is uh, make sure that you're working on solutions for real problems. I, I, I think certainly in Silicon Valley, but a lot of startups around around the world, uh, they've got a great solution looking for a problem. Great solution. No actual problem that anyone cares to, to pay for. You know, the the I can think of many, you know, the juicer on the counter that squeezed this tube of, uh, of condensed juice. There's no particular reason that that's anyone's problem. I have frozen juice, I have fresh juice, have plenty of juice around the corner. I don't need to squeeze something out of a bag. It solved no pain point for anyone. So you got to find real pain points. You also got to find real pain points for people who have money, right? So if you find a pain point that solves something for people who can't pay you, that also doesn't build a great business. It builds a fine nonprofit. That's a very different business. So so I, uh, I, I strongly suggest that you find real pain points with real people or real businesses that have money, that are willing to spend that money on, their, uh, on the problem and on the solution that, uh, that you have for them. Today for being a guest on Business Story of the Week. And before we cut out on this episode, I wanted to ask you, how can people get a hold of you? How can people learn more about what you're doing? And how do people engage with you? And we will transcribe this and put it in the show notes for everybody to find. The best way for people to get a hold of me is kevinserace.com. Um, and uh, my LinkedIn is there. Uh, all of my updates are there. And a virtual Kevin is there. You can actually talk to me in text, in uh, um, in audio, actually talk, or in video. Literally, I come up with a virtual me. It looks like me. It sounds like me. It acts like me. It's been trained on all of my writing. So uh, you want to ask me about my book, my upcoming book, The Joy Success Cycle. You can literally ask my virtual clone and have interactions with my virtual clone. It's pretty amazing. All right. Amazing. So you did it. Thank you for being a guest on the show today. Let me tell you what you can expect next. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all this. We're going to cut it into an episode. It will go on the business story of the week page. So make sure you go on Apple podcasts, review us, like us, go on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to us on Spotify, and this will come out in the next 30 days or so, depending on our workload and how many shows we have. We have had a lot of interest in the show lately, so we may be a little backed up, but the show will get out. In the meanwhile, we will send you clips 
that feel free to share on social. Also, the full episode, feel free to share any way that you like. The content is yours to share and put out there. We just ask that you uh, mark us and tag us in the in the notes if you do. So in the copy, put hashtag business story of the week, link back to us. We would appreciate that. And if you think that you might be interested in doing more podcasts, live ones and studio ones, Zoom ones, Riverside ones, uh, there's a whole host of shows that likely if you did this one and succeeded, you would probably be really great at and a great way of getting your message out. So your host will talk to you about potentially getting you booked on a strategy call for a business story of the week's sister company, Podcast Cola, or becoming a YouTube influencer through Viral Mirage. Thanks again for being a part of this. Looking forward to working with you.